Today, I'm gonna to talk about how I would become a marketing data analyst if I had to start all over again. I've been in this digital marketing space for eight years, the last three years as a marketing data analyst, and then before that, five years in a digital marketing agency, running ads, doing SEO, and all the other marketing activities. So how did I get here? Now, first and foremost, this is a very niche type of data analyst where it's not as intensive in business uh, intelligence, data viz tools, uh, or programming languages. And you can be a bit more artsy and you can focus a bit more on web analytics. So it's arguably one of those overlooked niches. And that's what I specialize in, uh, where you, know, you can play more with web analytics and uh, make a good living from it. So let's get into it. There's three different uh, types of things you need to do. So I've broken it out into three steps to get you there because I believe that if I had taken these steps, I would have gotten to where I am today with my salary and everything probably a lot sooner. So hopefully these tips help you. Now let's get straight to it with tip number one. The first step you need to take if you're starting from scratch and you need to start over is you need to do some self-studying to develop these critical essential skills. Now, part of the nuance here is choosing the right essential skills. You don't wanna focus on skills that are tangential or aren't that impactful. So when you boil it down, I think there's uh, just a few things that you need to learn, which is great. You don't have to learn that many, but you do need to learn these things. And those things are one, some type of a data visualization tool, especially preferably one of the big, most common ones that are used all the time. So um, I think Looker Studio is a good beginner tool to start with. Um, it's super easy to learn and it's owned by Google, so it's commonly used. Um, another very big one is Tableau, which is much more complicated, but um, seen as much more credible. A lot of people look for this on job postings and resumes. So, you know, pick a tool. Uh, you may even be able to graduate from Looker Studio to Tableau. And the best part is Looker Studio is free, so you can just get started right away. Tableau, it is paid, so there's a bit more um, of a gatekeeping aspect to being able to use and learn from the tool. However, I believe they now have a free version that you can play in and learn. And then there's uh, tons of tutorials online for these types of uh, skills. Um, and I'll get into what those resources are shortly. Other than a BI tool, I think another thing is to get very familiar with at least one web analytics tool. Now you see a theme here, I say at least one of, because once you master one very commonly used one, you can kind of apply a lot of those skills to other tools. The exception would be, of course, maybe Tableau because of the high learning curve. So that's why I kind of suggested you also consider learning Tableau or another one like Power BI as well, if you can get your hands on it. Um, but for web analytics tools, Google Analytics 4 is the predominant player. However, there's a lot of other competitors coming out now uh, that other companies use for more data or metrics. Amplitude or Mixpanel are a couple of the big ones in the market, but there's a lot of others like Heap out there. But I think uh, you should get pretty familiar with Google Analytics 4. You have no excuses. They literally offer a free course that's like six hours and a free certification with that. There's endless resources online on YouTube and other places to teach you the ins and outs of Google Analytics 4. Now, for both of these skill sets, these two mentioned so far, you probably need to get at least to an intermediate level and know it really well. But for the next couple of skill sets, I think you really just need to get to like a intermediate to beginner level because you don't need to become advanced you, to, to really do well in these areas because frankly, you need to use the basic skills to get the job done. You don't need to do anything fancy most of the time. And these last two skills are SQL. SQL is the basic programming language that you need. I know sometimes you may see Python out there, but SQL is much more commonly looked for. And once again, 
no excuses here. There are so many free tutorials and courses online. And if you dedicate yourself a couple hours every day for a few months, you can become very proficient at these skills. And then the last one I would say is kind of like strategy and uh, understanding business goals and, and soft skills and communication skills. So this is kind of like a uh, catch all for kind of the soft skills needed in this job. It's not just, you know, following orders sometimes, it's really being the consultant and being able to understand that person's business goals and then translate those into reports and charts that help with that. So it involves communication, charisma, the ability to emote, to articulate, and speak concisely, but also ask the right questions and really understand what that business is looking for and then bring that all together into certain charts. Uh, certain people lack these skills and that's why they may have the technical skills, but then when it comes time for the job, um, they can't really perform as well as they would hope when they're in front of a leader or a team member that they need to help. Now, once again, this is for a marketing data analyst, so it's a little bit different from a data analyst role in the fact that uh, a data analyst role may be more reliant and focused on technical skills involving more proficiency in SQL to at least an intermediate level, and as well as really good maybe Excel or Google Sheet skills. But for a marketing data analyst, also called a digital analyst or analytics engineer, you don't need to be a master in Excel. I would say a beginnerish to intermediate level is good enough. So definitely get decent at Google Sheets, but I don't think that really takes a long time. Usually if I have a need for something like how do I do deduplicate a table or how do I uh, use a pivot table, you can really learn that if you dedicate yourself in like one to two hours like I did. So that's all you really need. Step two is other than self-study, you need to start building some real world projects to add to your portfolio. Especially if you're starting out, this is something that they're looking for. They want to, what employers are really screening for is if you can actually do the job when they hire you so that the money they're paying you is worth it. And so they prefer someone who can hit the ground running. And a lot of times having been on the other side in those hiring interviews and screening candidates, I think a lot of mistakes I see is that uh, one, they will have no portfolio and no real world projects. You need to have something at the very least. It could be as simple as some of your own self starter projects that you built for your own website. But even better than that is if you can have some quick part-time freelance clients, maybe some organizations uh, that you do some work for. And I know it's tough to get these, but do it for free, you know, or, you know, spend a bit of your own money to build something because they really want to see that you can actually do the work and you have the hustle to actually do that. Most candidates don't even bother to do this. And if they do, the second mistake they make is that their projects are met at best. They're just kind of like random small things that they built themselves. Um, and it, it wasn't high effort and it just only demonstrates that ha they have a very beginner basic knowledge in something like, you know, building some basic charts in Looker Studio. So, you know, the effort there is perceived as low, maybe moderate at best. So you can really beat out the crowd by just having more hustle and actually putting in some effort into some of these things. So um, real world experience, you can get this from freelancing, you can get this from internships where you're not paid, you can get this from a stepping stone career, full time or part time, where you get your foot in the door. Now, uh, I do have to say that for me, the first five years in this professional career I have in this industry, I did get my foot in the door at a digital marketing agency making entry level wage, which was not much. And that really propelled me forward to get my next jobs because not only do you get paid, uh, not well, but who cares, but you also get real world experience with real clients, tons of them, which you can put on your portfolio and you can speak to because they're not only just going to scan your portfolio, most 
job interviews are going to ask you about what you did to really see if you know what you're doing in these tools. And so I was able to get trained and get real world experience at a, a job beforehand. So really consider a, a career that can be a stepping stone for you to get where you want. Be patient. It may not be the first job out of school where you get your dream job, but if you can level up in that career and get where you want to go, that is a tremendous benefit. So for me, I spent five years there because um, I enjoyed it. I got comfortable. Looking back, should I have done that? Could I have gotten here faster? If you want to get here faster, of course, yeah. You you probably, you know, if you really wanted to, could get all the knowledge you wanted in a year or two at your stepping stone career. So think about that. Um, that is huge. A lot of these people who are hiring are looking for real world experience and real projects on your portfolio for a reason. They want you to hit the ground running rather than be a hindrance to them when they when you hire when you get hired because uh, you know they're paying for someone who actually can do the work and then um, I think the last part of that and this is step three is preparing for your jobs your job interview now this can be a job interview for um, your stepping stone career or for that final uh, marketing data analyst role um, on this job interview I think one critical piece that you need to prepare for are those uh, technical exercise skills and job interview questions where they ask you and they try and sift through to see if you actually have this experience. Um, so the best way of preparing, and this is the hack that really gets you above most people because they don't do this, is you come prepared to the interview with some real world projects in your portfolio that you can send in a link ahead of time and then you can talk to while you're there and you make these projects. It doesn't have to be a lot of them because you just be one really good one or two. I, I like two better, but um, it's more about quality than quantity. If you can present these and show very clearly that you know what you're doing, you're going to be ahead of the pack. Don't just show basic stuff. Show some really uh, proficient stuff that you know how to do some SQL programming, you know how to maybe use um, a data viz tool very well and you can show a lot of different graphs. Speak to that and how you brought it together and if you have some real client experience, bring that up, show how you help the client. Those are things that you can do to really stand out. There may be a technical test, um, there may not. But really what they're trying to sift for is if you can actually get the job done. Because a lot of people can talk. They can say, oh yeah, I know how to do this. I have these technical skills. But then when they get hired, they don't. And that is a huge issue. So they're really screening for liars and the truth. And they're getting pretty good at doing it because they've done a lot more interviews than you. And so rather than trying to fib it, why not just dedicate the time to get these skills. And I believe if you're really dedicated, you can get all the skills you need in six months. The truth of the matter is most candidates aren't willing to put in that work. So the project, the exercises, the things they speak on on the resume, maybe even the dashboard that they built, if they even built one, probably was a total amount of like six hours of their time in total at best. Of effort um, so con compare that to the person who spent just even a couple two to three hours a day for six months building their skills and then building some really good portfolio projects so uh, one bonus tip before we wrap up here is how do you actually build these portfolio projects or demonstrate irrefutably that you have these skills um, I think one big mistake I see from a lot of beginners having screened a lot of these is that when they show something like a, you know, Looker Studio dashboard example, is that they start with the data set and then they just say, you know, they, they pull a sample data set offline, uh, online, and then they just start with the data set and then they visualize some random charts about random stuff. 
oh yeah, this person uh, got this many shoe sales and this is what happened this day and this is how many people had this gender. And they're just playing off ear based off what charts they think would look cool or interesting. And that is actually a, a big red flag that they don't realize because they're new and naive to this world because that indicates that they have no real world experience. A business leader, a company would never just be like, oh yeah, let's just pull some random charts to answer some random questions. Oftentimes they have some very common, I mean, it, it varies by company, but there's usually, generally speaking, some common threads and business questions that they want to ask. How much traffic are we getting? Where is that traffic coming from? Is that quality traffic? Is that traffic converting into sales or leads or phone calls or whatnot? Um, what regions are contributing more to that traffic? These are common questions that you can pull and steal from me that are commonly used because guess what? A lot of business owners care about money. They care about not going under, not going bankrupt, succeeding. Uh, it's not always about revenue. Sometimes it's about user experience or other things, but not understanding that and just randomly putting together some charts to answer some random questions like what color t-shirt uh, was sold most on Tuesday. No one cares about that. It shows that you have zero experience compared to someone who has been in the field, which means you would have a lot of training needed, which means you're less likely to be a desirable candidate and you would get things wrong. So understanding those things and showing you can hit the ground running, not to say that you have to have everything learned. Like I said, I still had a lot to learn, but I, uh, I still got my foot in the door at that first agency I worked for, even without a degree in the field, just by getting halfway. So you don't have to be perfect, but all of these tips, if you can get better at them and improve, they increase your chances, your probability. So if you like this video, leave a like and subscribe and check out my free email newsletter down below. If you sign up, you get a free guide on five signs if a marketing data analyst is a career for you, as well as exclusive tips on how to get this job. Thanks for watching.